Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students uh, so in the last class we were deriving the equations of uh, oscillating planes rectifying planes and uh, uh, normal plane and then i at the end, I started uh, to show you a, a small example where how you can calculate the length of a curve, but due to time constraint, uh, we could not continue. So today, um, I will continue with the same example and uh, then we move on to our next uh, um, example or a next topic, we will see. So in the last class, um, after deriving the equation of the rectifying plane, I moved on to show you how you can calculate the length of a curve from a certain point for a, from a point t equals to 0 to a certain point let us say t equals to some t1. So, this is basically given by uh, integral from 0 to t r dot dt. So, r dot is basically your uh, um, if you remember from integral calculus. Uh, so, if you remember from integral calculus um, the length of a curve from a point uh, t equals to a to t equals to b is basically um, uh, l equals to sorry is basically l equals to uh, let me go to a new play a new page. So, l equals to integral from t equals to a to t equals to b uh, from integral calculus it was dx dt whole square plus dy dt whole square dt and how this is coming here is mainly because uh, we know that ds equals to dx square plus dy square. So, if you integrate both sides with respect to um, with respect to s actually. So, this will actually give you. So, let us say t equals to a to t equals to b you are integrating. So, here we substitute t equals to a to t equals to b and uh, if you integrate then this will be s at b s at a. So, that is basically the length of the curve measured from t equals to a to t equals to b and on the right hand side we can be able to write uh, t equals to a to t equals to b uh, dx dt whole square plus dy dt whole square times dt. So, that is uh, so we adjusted a dt. So, now in case of vector calculus uh, our l is let us say t equals to uh, we can start from 0 and let us say we are at t equals to t 1 and uh, r dot is basically dx dt whole square plus dy dt whole square. So, this thing can be written as so this thing can be written as instead of writing it again this thing can be written as mod of dr dt because r is a vector times dt or you can write it as a small notation simply r dot dt. So, these two formulas are same because your r dot is nothing but uh, the mod of r dot is nothing but this thing. So, in the in the in the uh, example from the previous class where we had uh, x equals to 2 t y equals to t square and z equals to 1 by 3 t cube. If we wanted to if we want to calculate let us say uh, length of the curve from a point t is equals to 0 to a point t then in that case our l is basically uh, t is equals to 0. So, the length of the curve length of the curve is at any point t is r dot dt and uh, our r dot is from previous class we can substitute the value of r dot. So, r dot is basically r dot is basically 2 2t two t, t, t square. So, I can substitute the value 4 4 t square and uh, this one is uh, t to the power 4 uh, dt. So, this can be written as uh, t square plus 2 whole square right. Uh, yes and uh, this is basically uh, if we integrate then uh, this is basically uh, uh, so first of all we have to take it out of the uh, of the square root. So, this is t square plus 2 dt and uh, if we integrate then this will be 2t plus 1 by 3 
t cube right so this is the required answer so just substitute uh, instead of t if we substitute let's say t equals to 1 then uh, this will be 2 plus 1 by 3 so um, 7 by 3 would be the required um, length and of course you can substitute the unit over there so to calculate the length of a curve all you have to do is calculate r dot and that r dot will give you the required um, length of the curve if we use this formula all right if we if we use this formula so next um, i will give you one example to practice um, because it follows the same logic and same uh, method uh, method uh, so it, it's kind of tedious to do the same example again and again but you can practice uh, at your own these examples so i'm going to write one example for you to practice so example find the unit tangent vector unit tangent vector unit principal normal or unit normal and unit binormal unit well not and uh, let's say I'm, I'm including everything so unit binormal osculating plane normal plane and uh, rectifying plane at t equals to pi by 4 for the curve x equals to a cos 2t y equals to a sin 2t and z equals to 2a sin t all right and um, so f f and uh, you can also try to calculate find the find uh, or find also the length of the curve measured from t equals to 0 to t equals to pi by 4. So, this is a very nice example to practice all the things that we have studied before. So, first of all, you can be able to write this uh, x, y, z as a equation of a curve um, as r equals to f t a vector equation and then from there you can calculate dr dt d square by dt square d r, r triple dot and uh, r triple dot uh, at uh, t equals to pi by 4 we probably don't need r triple dot but it's uh, good to calculate up to r triple dot for any given uh, equation because you might need at some point or may not need it uh, just that uh, it's good to have uh, have it on your paper so now uh, once we have those equations uh, we can be able to um, so I can put a necessity to calculate those things. So, I can also write curvature and torsion. So, now you need those derivatives. So, calculate unit tangent vector, unit normal, unit binormal, curvature, torsion, osculating plane, normal plane, rectifying plane at pi t equals to pi by 4. So, now you need all those derivatives and uh, once we once you have those derivatives, you can be able to calculate curvature and uh, torsion by using that uh, r dot uh, cross product with r triple dot and all that. So, use that formula to calculate the curvature and the torsion. And then uh, from dr dt, we can be able to calculate our unit tangent vector by dividing it with its uh, magnitude r, to, r dot. Uh, from there, we can be able to calculate binormal, normal using that uh, n equals to b cross t or whatever it is. And uh, from there, uh, we will be able to calculate our osculating plane, rectifying plane and normal plane the way I just showed you and uh, in the previous class. And um, finally, we can be able to calculate the length of the curve from t is equals to 0 to t equals to pi by 4 by integrating 0 to pi by 4 mod of r dot dt. So, whatever r dot we will get, we will take its uh, uh, magnitude and uh, just integrate it with respect to t and then substitute the value of t equals to 0 and t equals to pi by 4. 
So that's how you'll be able to calculate all these uh, terms here. And it's a nice example to practice for you, uh, for you to practice. So um, keep doing that. And now we will move on to our next aspect of uh, uh, vector calculus, which is basically application of vector calculus in mechanics. So that was the, one of the topics that I suggested in the syllabus. So now we will start with that. So our next topic is application So, why do we have to study the application of uh, vector calculus in mechanics? The thing is, whenever a particle moves, it has a speed, but uh, more precisely, it has a velocity because uh, whenever it is moving, and not only that it has a speed, it also has a direction that in which direction it is moving. So, when once we talk about the direction, that is when the vector quantity comes in. So, a vector quantity is something that has magnitude as well as the direction, uh, but a scalar quantity has only the magnitude. So, when we talk about a motion of a particle or motion of a body, we always talk about its direction and when we talk about its direction, that is when the concept of vector uh, vectors come, uh, comes in. Now, um, that direction, so, one, the, so a particle moving has a speed. Um, and uh, once we associate that speed with a direction, then that is when we get velocity. So, velocity is something which has a direction as well as a magnitude. So, um, you see how motion or a mecha basically mechanics is connected to vectors. So, we will start with uh, those uh, topics now. So, first of all, what do we mean by velocity of a particle? So, definition. and how do we express it in terms of uh, vectors all right so the velocity the velocity of a particle relative to a suitable frame of reference is the time rate of change is the time rate of change of the position vector. R of the particle relative to the given frame of reference. So, that means uh, the velocity of a particle when it is, uh, when, it is when a particle is moving uh, is basically the time rate of change of the position vector. So, that means if we talk about position vector, we are talking about the, uh, the actually the direction in a way and how the direction of the particle is changing over time. So, that time rate of change of the position vector is actually called as the velocity. All right. So, if we consider let us say if we have a curve uh, this r equals to f t and uh, suppose this is my equation and uh, that is origin that is the point p. So, this is our position vector r and if it is moving along this curve with respect to t uh, or with respect to time then uh, that is actually the velocity of that particle. So, we have the vector equation and uh, that can be expressed as so with the reference uh, with, the, with the with the reference to a frame if a particle p 
if a particle p has at any instance the position vector r as o p equals to r and uh, if during the time interval delta t the increment is delta r. So, let us say the increment here is r plus delta r for any time t uh, any time delta t. So, this position vector is let us say q is r plus delta r. So, at any time so, at any time interval delta t the increment in r b delta r then delta r by delta t is the average velocity average velocity of p relative to o during the interval delta t and hence limit delta t delta r by delta t is equals to d r d t is equals to r dot is called as the velocity is the velocity of the particle p or of the point p at that instant it is also called as instantaneous velocity of p. So, basically um, if we have a small increment uh, um, uh, for any time interval delta t we have a small increment delta r then basically delta r by delta t is the average velocity. So, how much it has increased is basically um, it is increased by delta r and delta r by delta t is actually the average velocity of p relative to this o origin o during the interval delta t and therefore, we can write in terms of limit and uh, this d r d t or r dot is actually our velocity at that um, at that point p uh, at an instant t. So, basically if we have a given if we have a curve let us say r is equals to f t. Uh, so, if we have a curve let us say r is equals to f t then of course, p is called as the trajectory. So, as uh, as, as uh, the, the, the direction or the uh, the curve along which p is moving is called as the uh, is called as the trajectory the locus of p is basically called as the trajectory so the the curve or the path it follows so that is basically the trajectory of p and if we have a given curve r uh, is equals to ft as as the equation of the curve then basically we are doing is what we are doing is we are writing velocity dr dt is equals to f dot t f dot t sorry and that is how we calculate the velocity of the of the given uh, uh, point p on a curve r is equals to f t. All right. Now, uh, since we can write uh, since we can write v is equals to r dot which is basically d r d t. So, I can write d r d s times d s d t. So, s is the arc length and uh, rate of change of arc length is not uh, relevant to the direction. So, in which direction the arc length is changing uh, is not relevant. So, basically the rate of change of arc length is given by this d s d t and d r d s is basically our unit tangent vector. So, you see if I take mod of v then it is basically mod of d s d t. So, d s d t is rate of change of arc length. So, it will always be positive. So, we have d s d t and this positive thing can be denoted by v and this v is actually the speed. So, as we were saying speed is a scalar quantity. So, mod of v or the magnitude of v will actually give us the speed of the particle p uh, along that curve or the speed of the point p along that curve and that can also be given by d s t t. So, differentiation of the arc length with respect to t will give you the speed that how uh, fast uh, that point p is moving along the along the arc length of the curve. 
So, speed of the particle or speed of the point, particle or point uh, both are same uh, in this context at the point P. All right. So, uh, this is basically our velocity. So, this is our speed and now we can define our acceleration. So, the acceleration, so after speed we have acceleration. So, acceleration is it is defined as it is time rate of change of velocity. So, it is basically time rate of change of velocity and uh, thus acceleration vector thus. So, first of all rate of change of r is called as velocity and now rate of change of velocity is called as acceleration. So, if it is uh, increasing if the rate of change of uh, uh, velocity is increasing then in that case it will be acceleration if it is decreasing then in that case it will be deceleration. So, although we use acceleration um, here in this context, but those are the two uh, how to say uh, adjectives you use um, that is acceleration and deceleration. So, thus acceleration vector let us say A of the particle p at some instant t is given by. So, basically we have a as a limit delta t. So, time rate of change of velocity. So, limit delta t delta v by delta t. So, at any time interval delta t with an increment of time interval delta t, uh, the increase or decrease in velocity is delta v. So, basically the uh, delta v by delta t will give you the acceleration and uh, making limit delta t goes to 0, this will go to dv dt and uh, we know that our v is dr dt. So, this will be actually d square r by dt square or simply r double dot. So, r double dot is actually our uh, acceleration and uh, uh, it is it's, it's also a vector quantity because r is a vector quantity. All right. So, um, we have uh, delta v the, sorry a is equals to the r double dot. So, and this actually defines our uh, acceleration. So, if we are asked to calculate the acceleration of a, a moving particle along a curve r is equals to f t all you have to do just differentiate it twice with respect to the parameter whether it is t or theta whatever it is and uh, that will actually give you the acceleration. And if you are given a point let us say t equals to 1 then it will give you the acceleration at that point t equals to 1. Now, uh, in this equation v is equals to uh, in, in this equation v is equals to uh, let us say um, t cap times small v. So, we have v is equals to t cap times d s d t. So, I can be able to write it as t cap small v. So, v in this case this v is scalar this v is vector. So, if I differentiate both sides then this will be d v d t is equals to d t d t times v and then t cap times d v d t. So, this v is scalar. So, now the unit tangent vector. So, and the unit tangent vector, the unit tangent vector t may be regarded as a function, regarded as a function. of the arc length s of the arc length s then our dt dt is basically dt ds times ds dt right so 
and d t d s is basically our kappa n from that uh, Serret Fernet formula and uh, d s d t is our velocity v. So, this is kappa n and uh, if I substitute all these values here. So, this will reduce to so equation let us say 1 uh, from 1 and 2 we will have 1 and 2 we will have uh, d v d t which is basically our acceleration is equals to d t d t d t d t is actually kappa n times v square kappa n v square this v is scalar these are vectors plus uh, um, t times d v d t. So, d v d t and uh, d v d t is uh, d v d t and I can be able to write kappa n as uh, 1 by rho. So, this can be written as n cap and uh, uh, v square by rho plus t times d v d t where rho is the radius of curvature. radius of curvature and kappa is just the curvature and kappa is the curvature. So, I have used uh, kappa is equals to 1 by rho. So, this is what I have used. So, kappa is equals to 1 by rho is taken here. So, this is basically uh, uh, v square by rho. So, v is our velocity uh, sorry speed by radius of curvature plus t cap times d v d t and this is our unit normal n. So, uh, what does it say is that acceleration vector. So, what does it say is that uh, acceleration vector. So, you can see acceleration vector can be written as the combination of n cap and t cap. So, n cap and t cap means if we go to our previous definition. So, basically um, the acceleration vector is given as the linear combination of the normal and the tangent vector. That means, the acceleration vector is perpendicular to B because if we take here. So, if we take if we take dot product with b, then in that case n dot b will be 0 and t dot b will be 0 and on the left hand side we will have a dot b equals to 0. So, what does that mean? That mean that the that means that this vector a or the acceleration vector lies in the osculating plane and that is by taking the dot product with b equals to 0. So, this relation this relation uh, I can name it as uh, let us say 3 equation uh, relation number 3. So, sorry relation number 3. So, the relation 3 the relation 3 shows that vector a is an osculating plane because it is given as the combination of with it is given as the combination of n and t. So, if you take the dot product then a dot b will be 0 lies in the or is in the osculating plane and uh, the tangential and the tangential and uh, normal components of acceleration components of acceleration are uh, v uh, uh, tangential component is uh, uh, d v d t where v is a scalar and uh, normal component is v square by rho where v is the uh, speed and rho is the radius of curvature. So, uh, from this relation uh, we can see clearly that the acceleration vector actually lies in the uh, in li lies in the plane of t and n and it is perpendicular to the vector binormal b and uh, so that means uh, the vector a lies in the osculating plane and uh, the component for the, the tangential and the normal components for a are given as d v d t where v is the speed and v square by v square divided by rho 
with where rho is the radius of curvature. So, this was uh, this is another uh, nice uh, uh, formula to remember that the acceleration vector lies in the osculating plane. So, we will uh, stop here today and uh, in the next class we will uh, derive several uh, other how to say um, relations uh, keeping vector calculus in mind and mechanics in mind and we will see how vector calculus is widely used in mechanics and uh, we will also um, uh, try to work out few examples if time permits. So, we will stop here for today and I will look forward to you in your next class. Thank you.